That was the sound, of course, of my guest, Cass Elliot. And there's a place, there's a place in Las Vegas called The Strip. And on The Strip is a very famous spa called The Flamingo. And in front of The Flamingo is the largest sign I've ever seen in my life that says Cass <laughs> Elliot. I've, you know, I've, all my life I've wanted billing that size and I've never had it. That's not 100%, it's 1,000%. <laughs> I don't know what 100% means. I'm sure, it, actually, it says Marty Allen out there, too. You're very kind. Oh, not to say I that. didn't look at that. <laughs> it does say Cass Elliot in very large letters. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are it's you kind happy? of embarrassing. Cass, yeah. I know you some years. Are you happy? I think so. I'm, I went for a couple of years there when I wasn't really very happy. I wasn't happy in my music, and consequently, I wasn't happy in my life, and things were really going pretty rotten. But then I decided that... Uh, I really had to take stock of myself. And How do you do that? Well, I tried to I realize... I've never been able to, so well, I'm Well, I tried to realize why I had wanted to go into show business to begin with. Why did you want to go into show because business? Because people looked like they were having a good time, and that's what had gone out of it for me. I had stopped having a good time. And that uh, was the important thing for me uh, in Las Vegas, was to go out there twice a night for 35 minutes and have a good time, you know, and really enjoy myself. And Is it easier there. now that you're alone? Oh, yeah. Do you worry more? Um, no, I don't. What? I worry less. I worry uh, less. Why? Well, because if you're going to be good, you're going to be good. And you did it. And if you're going to be bad, <laughs> nobody's making mistakes for you. You're making your own mistakes. You know? Did you change your mind after you, after you started alone? Has your format stayed with you since you began alone? No, I've changed quite a bit musically. Um, I was looking for a home for myself in, in rock music. Whereas all along I had known that I really never had a rock background. I mean, I liked classical music, I liked jazz, and mm -hmm. I liked uh, what people now call middle-of-the-road music. Is that what they know? call it? Yes. I, M O R yes. is what they call it. <laughs> and uh, with the Mamas and the Papas, I was really firmly entrenched in rock music. And when I left the Mamas and Papas, I sort of guess I expected to stay there. But I didn't have the material, and I didn't really have the inclination, the music that I leaned to is not hard rock music. So um, I had to look for a place for myself to find out what kind of music I wanted to make. Our guest musically, Cass Elliot, and we are, in fact, I'm in the path of luxury here because I'm sitting <laughs> in a sumptuous suite, <clears throat> dehumidified or humidified. Which humidified. Is humidified, a sumptuous suite in the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, which is west of Chicago, isn't it? Somewhat, and south. Cass, where did it begin with you? Oh, dear. Before New York, where did it begin? I guess it really began uh, between my junior and senior year of high school. I was... Uh, what did it? There must have been a springboard, somebody? Well, it was my best friend at the time. I was studying uh, French in night school because I'd had four years of Latin and needed two languages to get into college. And um, my best girlfriend was doing summer stock that summer. And I would, when I finished my classes, I would go out and pick her up. And uh, summer school ended. And I went out to pick her up one night, and the play that she'd been doing, which was The Boyfriend, had been extended. It had been, they'd been doing it so long, and it had been received so well. And one of the girls in the chorus had already made a commitment to go on to another show, and she couldn't stay. So they were desperately looking around for somebody, and my girlfriend said, well, she sings. And I had <laughs> braces on my teeth and, you know, just every Excuse other me. adolescent hang-up. And there I, next thing I knew, I was into the chorus, you know. What? And I did the show for three weeks. And then I, I went back to school, and somehow school didn't seem the same to me. It just, uh, the idea of going on to become a doctor uh, just uh, didn't seem like I, you know. So I talked it over with my parents. I said, listen, I'd like to be in show business. And they laughed, ha-ha, that funny joke. And <laughs> they said, nobody's going to pay you for that, and don't be silly, and, you know, go, go to college like you're supposed to. And I said, well, look, I'll make a deal with you. You let me have five years, and I'll go to New York and try and make something of myself. And if I don't make it in five years, I'll come back. And I went on September 19th, and five years later, on September the 4th, California Dreamin' was released. So I really just made it under the wire. What did they say about it afterwards? Have they ever discussed it? My mother is very pleased. My mother, uh, she, never, she never encouraged us, uh, my sister and I, there are three of us, my sister and brother and I, mm -hmm. but she never encouraged my sister and I to go out and marry well. You know, that was not her aim. She told us to go out and do the best with what God had given us and make lives for ourselves. You know, if we fell in love and got married and made a good marriage, that was okay, too. You know, she wasn't against it, but she was basically concerned with us living our lives as human beings, you know, so she wanted me to do whatever it was I wanted to do. Isn't that nice? That's a nice thing to hear from any family. 
And of course, the sound of Cass Elliot, our guest. Cass, you've played all kinds of cafes. I is that the word they use today? Coffee what do you call houses them? is what we used to call them in the in the old days. The first clubs I ever played were were coffee houses in the village. Right in New York. Where do you? What is enjoyment anymore for a performer? Do you like, for instance, for those of you listening that haven't visited Las Vegas, it I you know might we might make jokes about it, but it is terribly elegant by my standards. Well, it's the epitome of of person-to-person -person show business. Um, television is interesting and exciting. I've done a lot of television, as have you. Yes. But nothing can quite compare with walking out on that stage and seeing those people there, and you get an instant feedback from them. You know whether they like you or whether they're just there for the booze or whether they're <laughs> just there because somebody dragged them there. And nothing can quite compare with that. And Las Vegas is, for a place in the middle of nowhere, I mean, for being actually a small town, which Vegas really is, um, the best talent in the world comes to Las Vegas. I mean, the, you can stay here a week and see the best talent that's available, that's around. And I don't know why that is. I mean, Las Vegas is a phenomenon. It really is. My guest is Cass Elliott. And for those of you that uh, musically might not be, you know, gratefully oriented in that direction, what kind of material do you do in this show? Well, I do uh, some new tunes. I do... Um, to what people would call older tunes, I do uh, More Than You Know and uh, I'll Be Seeing You, which are two of my very favorite songs. But uh, being a singer, uh, I don't have the prejudices that a lot of writers have, you know, about, oh, it has to be new, it has to be fresh, it has to be contemporary. And to me, uh, being a singer, I look first at a lyric. Yes. And then if the lyric says something that I would say, if I could write it, or that I would express, or that I want people to feel that I feel, then I'll take the song from there. And so I look always at the lyric first. The sound of our guest, Cass Elliott, the delightful sound. Cass, how much of the season do you work with a schedule like this? Well, Perform, this, I mean, I know it takes this a lot of preparation. Year, I will work more than I, than I have in the past five and a half or six years. Um, I stopped working so much when my daughter was born mm -hmm. because I wanted to stay home with her. Now she's in school and she loves school and so that she, you know, I, I don't take her on the road with me. Um, I'll be doing stock in June and July. What are you going to do? I'm going to do the uh, Ethel Merman part and anything goes. How oh, great. And I'm, Where are you playing? I'm playing um, the Lee Goober circuit, which will be all, is all over the East You're Coast. You're coming East. You're going yes. to be a Yankee again. Yes. Would you enjoy that? Do you like the East still? Oh, yes. After California? Really? Well, California, I hate California. It's cold and it's damp. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I live there because a lot of my work is there. I record there and I do a lot of television there. But um, there is a lot of smog and, you know, I don't really... As a matter of right. fact, my house is so strange because I looked at 78 houses before I bought my house. And my house looks like it was just snatched out of Connecticut and set right down in the middle of California. And... Uh, <clears throat> with a lot of roses and a lot of grounds around it. And it just is a very Connecticut-type farmhouse. And uh, I love my house, but I'm not real crazy about California. The seasons never change. You never know. I find myself saying to friends, oh, last summer when you were here, and it was March, you know? <laughs> so, and I've been there since uh, August of 1965. So I've been there. I'm nearly a native. It's the longest I've ever lived anywhere since I left home. And, of course, of our guest, Cass Elliott. Cass... Now that you're such a giant star in the firmament with billing like this, is this your life? Is it ever going to change? Are there other things you want to do as much as you wanted to do music? Well, I wouldn't like to have to work as much as I'm working now. I, oh, nobody oh, wants man. to work that yeah. hard, you know. I, I'd like to go back to school. I'd like to move back east. There's a lot of things I'd like to do. I think if, if I work very hard for the next four or five years and really devote myself to my career, career which I haven't done in the past, um, I think that things will get, you know, I'll get myself in a position where financially I'll be able to make that album or two a year and maybe a film a year and not have to be on the road, although it is exciting to be back on the road. I mean, uh, I haven't done it in so long. It is exciting, but it's boring, too, and it's very lonely. People don't realize that. You know, you leave your home and you leave your friends, and uh, people can't be with you all the time. They can call you and cheer you up and everything, but basically, like, here in Las Vegas, I spend the entire day in the room, and then I do my shows, and then after the shows, I'm up for four or five hours winding down, and I just, you know, it, it requires extreme discipline, and, and nobody wants to do that. All work and no play makes Cass a dull girl. <laughs> well, Cass, you've been a delight. I want to thank you so much on behalf of 
myself and in behalf of the Army Reserve. I'd like to ask you to do this again sometime. I'd you, love to. I'd love to.